In this video, we look at some of the early ideas around the existence of atoms and the development of the atomic theory of matter. So let's start with a thought experiment. Suppose we take a pure piece of the element carbon and we grind it up, which is a physical process. Then suppose we take one of the tiny granules of carbon and cut it in half, and then cut it in half again, and again, and again, and so on, until we eventually end up with an incredibly small piece of carbon that we can no longer cut in half. That tiny piece of carbon, which would be about 77 picometers in diameter, would be called an atom of carbon. And atoms are considered the smallest piece of an element that can exist while still having the same properties of that element. Now the idea of the existence of atoms has been around since the time of Democrates of Abdera in the 5th century BC who postulated that matter was made up of tiny, indivisible particles called atomos, meaning uncut or indivisible. Nowadays, we can see direct evidence for the existence of atoms using sophisticated techniques such as scanning tunnelling microscopy or atomic force microscopy. But in between times, the evidence for the existence of atoms was derived from experimental observations from scientists such as Antoine Lavoisier, Joseph Proust and John Dalton throughout the 18th and 19th centuries. And their work led to Dalton setting down a series of postulates about the nature of atoms that is still more or less valid today. The essence of Dalton's ideas are summarised in the following points. All matter is composed of small indivisible particles called atoms. All atoms of a given element are identical and the atoms of different elements are different and the atoms within each element have their own characteristic properties, including, importantly, their own characteristic mass. In chemical reactions, atoms are neither created nor destroyed, and they are not changed into other atoms. In other words, chemical reactions simply involve a rearrangement of atoms. And this is a pretty good working definition of a chemical reaction or a chemical change for us at this stage. A chemical reaction simply involves a rearrangement of atoms. And the fourth of Dalton's postulates, compounds are formed when atoms of more than one element combine and a given compound always has the same relative number and kinds of atoms. Now the ideas of Dalton, Lavoisier and Proust led to several important laws of chemical combination, including the law of conservation of mass. This law was first proposed by Antoine Lavoisier in the second half of the 18th century. If we consider the second and third of Dalton's postulates, we see that atoms of different elements are different and have different characteristic properties, including having their own unique mass, and that chemical reactions simply involve a rearrangement of atoms, not the creation or destruction of atoms. It therefore follows that the mass of reactants before a chemical reaction must be equivalent to the mass of the products that result from that chemical reaction, given that the chemical reaction is simply a rearrangement of atoms. A concise statement of the law of the conservation of mass is mass is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions. Or to be even more precise, mass is conserved in chemical reactions. Now we should note that this law is an empirical law and it's derived from direct experimental evidence and it holds true within the limits of measurements of mass that we are able to make in the laboratory. In Einstein's world of relativity and E equals mc squared, where mass and energy are considered equivalent, this law should more correctly be stated as the law of conservation of mass energy. But as far as we're concerned in chemistry, the law of conservation of mass will do us just fine. Mass is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions, or mass is conserved in chemical reactions. Another law of chemical combination is the law of constant composition, otherwise known as the law of definite proportions. And it was first published by Joseph Proust in 1799. The law of constant composition states that for a given compound, the relative number and kind of atoms is constant. In other words, compounds consist of different types of atoms combined in the same fixed proportion by mass. Pure water, no matter where it comes from or how it is made, has the formula H2O and always consists in the same combination and ratio of hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms, that is, 2 to 1 hydrogen to oxygen. And this law leads us to a good working definition of compounds. A compound being two or more elements combined in the same fixed proportion by mass.
With very limited experimental evidence at the time, Dalton deduced the law of multiple proportions, which states that when two elements combine to form more than one compound, the mass of one element that combines with a fixed mass of the other element is always in a ratio of small whole numbers. In other words, different compounds made from the same elements differ in the relative numbers of each type of atom. So for example, carbon forms two stable compounds with oxygen, namely carbon monoxide, CO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. These compounds have different relative numbers of carbon and oxygen atoms, and they are combined in the ratios of small whole numbers, one to one for carbon monoxide, one to two for carbon dioxide. It's also important to note that both compounds have very different physical and chemical properties. Similarly, water, H2O, and hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, represent another common example of the law of multiple proportions. The ratio is 2 to 1 in water and 1 to 1 in hydrogen peroxide. And again, it should be pointed out that both water and hydrogen peroxide have very different chemical and physical properties. In following videos, we will look at atomic theory and atomic structure in more detail and delve down into the subatomic particles that make up atoms.